Welcome back to Clear Talk. On today's episode, we're going to cover why you shouldn't set your goals on New Year's Eve and the truth behind putting your happiness into holidays. And then we discuss how to choose what expertise that you should focus on as a coach. And lastly, really how to create a value ladder in your coaching business, but not the way Russell Brunson taught it. By the way, at the end of this episode, we get super spiritual on how to develop belief in yourself. So if you really like that stuff, stay until the end. And let us know down in the comments below, what's your main goal for 2021? I'd love to find out what your focus is on. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to Clear Talk. I'm your host, Armin Shafi. This is my co-host. Jeanette Otero. And this is the number one show for coaches that need clarity. You want to go high ticket, build a business, grow an online business where you can spread your impact and scale your message online. And uh, we're excited to have you back. We go live every single Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern time um, so that we can answer your questions. Now, if you want your questions answered live on the show, make sure you go to askarmin.com on YouTube. Click the little button here down below. We leave it for you. And go and submit your questions. You're going to get free coaching on your questions. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to join a program to understand it. We're going to do our best to answer it for you. We built, we've sold over a million dollars of coaching online ourselves and offline through events and just making a big impact over the years. And so we've learned a couple things over the time. You know, we want to share with you guys. Yeah, I mean, a few, <laughs> just a few, you know, a handful. Um, and we would love to share with you guys to help you with your business. So make sure you go to askarmin.com so you can uh, go and submit your questions and get your questions answered live on the show. But if you're on YouTube right now watching the recording of this, then make sure you go and hit that subscribe button and that little notification bell if you want to be notified every time we drop a whole new episode every week or when we drop new free trainings for coaches. We have so many on how to sell over the phone, how to outline your program, how to sell, how to get clients through Facebook groups alone with no ads, how to run ads. There's so many different trainings on my YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe if you like content around how to grow your business online. And so the big question here is that, you know, how are coaches like us building a company, growing our impact online, getting clients consistently for our offer and our programs, while all uh, starting from scratch and starting with nothing, with no list, no audience, no nothing, and still making a huge difference and making a bunch of money at the same time. Big impact, big income. That's the big question. This show will give you the answer. So welcome back to Clear Talk. Jay with the hair. I was thinking about it, actually. I was like, since we started Clear Talk, I think I've had like five different hairstyles on the show. And I was like, wow, look at that. You can see my hair evolution. But if you looked at any of my old photos, you'd see hair evolution. I like new stuff. We balance each other out. I've had the same haircut and wardrobe for the last year. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) Armin is always the same. And you could, I'm always different. I've I'm, got a I'm dependable. Variety. I'm dependable. Yeah, you're consistent. Like they get on, they're gonna know Armin's gonna be in a, a, in a, black a plain t-shirt, t-shirt yep. plain t-shirt, jeans, jeans, same ass haircut, same haircut, no different. It's exactly you know, parted exactly the, the same, same way. Same thing. Yeah. Years. Actually, there's a whole video. Sam Ovens released a video on YouTube where it's like why successful people wear the same shirt every day. Yeah. Something like that. And it's like it just talks about decision making. Like you gotta remove the amount of decisions you make per day out of your out of your life so mm-hmm. that you can become more efficient. And uh, I didn't even know I did this. Yeah. But now I see like all the highest performance in business do this. I'm like, oh, yeah. not everybody. It's not a universal thing, but it's like most people actually dumb down their daily to do stuff like yeah. what they wear, what they dress, what they uh, you know what they eat. Mm-hmm. They dumb it down like. Um, and I realized I did it just out of necessity because I thought, like, why am I going to spend time thinking about what I'm going to wear? Now, for Absolutely. men, that makes sense. For women, I guess it's well, it's a different. different. I think I think it's different for everybody, of course. And I I think we've actually answered this question about like what should I wear and like something about dressing yeah, for yeah, success yeah, yeah, yeah. or something along those lines. But you know, I everyone's got to do what works for them. Like even for myself, I know I've draw I've made my routine like. Like I've brought that puppy way down yeah. in terms of like what I need to do and when like. I used to put on a, I feel like I used to be much more of a spectacle and like, yeah. gotta get ready, gotta be so dramatic. I, I used to wear three-piece suits. Yeah. Like, yeah. three-piece suits, matching socks with tie, matching pocket, watch pocket, with belt. Pocket square. Matching pocket square, like it was. It, it wasn't matching, but it was usually like an accented pocket square. I would I would wear probably, uh, it would take me like an hour or an hour and a half to get ready. Wow. And I enjoyed it because I loved like looking good. And then now it's like, I feel better wearing a t-shirt that fits well, that fits well. 
<laughs> um, anyway, so we didn't answer your questions about your coaching business and yes. you as a coach. Excited to get through this today. And by the way, we're not going to see you until next week. So Merry Christmas. Yes, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Merry Xmas. What else is there? Uh, Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Um, Merry New Year's soon. Yeah, Happy New Year. Make the rest of the year your best, the best of your year. Oh, okay. Like Armin would probably say. <laughs> make the rest of you, make the rest of your two weeks of this year the best of the two weeks of this year. Absolutely. Is that better? And then okay. take that into next year, guys. You can put it down a little bit if you like. Is it? Yeah. yeah I'm just putting it. Sorry, we, we're getting these new mics and stuff. I know I'm scratching it right now on the audio. Is that better? Yeah. Is it better? better? Okay, awesome. Okay, cool. Great. So let's uh, get started with the first question. Question number one. With the year coming to an end, what would you suggest is the most important thing to focus on in 2021 as a coach? That question is brought to us by Franklin. What you want to accomplish for the next year. Just just one big thing, you know, and reverse engineer from there, right? You don't have to plan out your whole year. No one, it's very rare people do that. Um, don't try to approach your life as a mathematical equation. Try to measure, keep management, that's fine, but also understand the life by default, by its nature, is volatile. It is unpredictable. That is the part of life that makes it life. If everything was just a straight, predictable path, it would be somewhat of a, um, it'd be just kind of weird because it's like you don't know um, how to have variety in your life. Yeah. So I don't ever try to schedule an entire quarter or something. I will set goals, but mm -hmm. I don't try to see what it would look like. I don't need that for my days. But um, most important thing is I'm doing this, actually, I'm setting aside lots of deep work days, I call them. A deep work day is essentially a whole day spent on just one task, yeah. and uh, which means no distractions away from everybody, everything. And my goal is to just go deep into that task. So for me, I'm going to have a deep work day set for just understanding um, what I've done this year. I actually did that yesterday. I sat down for a few hours, and I looked at my entire year. I went week by week in my calendar. How was that? Yeah, it was really cool. I went week by week in my calendar to see what things I did, like what meetings, yeah. who did I meet, what did I do, um, and, I, and I had all these flashbacks of things I'd done this year, like... The first quarter of this year is so different than so the different last than quarter the rest of this year. Of the year. Like, yeah, I'm like, whoa, yeah. like so much has happened this year. Yeah. This is my best year yet. Yeah. And it's been the most fill, fill, filled year, like most things have happened. So I did that to reminisce, to be like, okay, what, did I, what happened? Backtrack, reverse, measure, see what happened, see what I've done. It was really cool. Um, and then now I'm going to be setting up a deep work day to just focus on what I want next year done. And I actually already did that. I kind of created an outline of all the goals I want to achieve for next year. Like big, big time, right? Um, is it good? Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, and so now I'm going to set a deep work day and just go into like planning out how. Yeah. What's my plan? What's my goal? You know, I have my goals, but it's like, what's my plan for that now? And so I need a generalized strategy. And we're students of Think and Grow Rich. We understand that it's never usually your plan that you start with. That is the plan that gets you there. Amen. It's usually a plan that just gets you started. And then the plan shows up. Mm -hmm. The plan comes from infinite intelligence, from God, from universal intelligence, whatever you believe. A plan comes to you, ideas come to you, and that's what makes it happen. So, for example, there are people I have no idea I'm about to meet next year. I don't know who I'm going to meet. I'm going to meet them. Yeah. There's ideas I've never thought about that are going to hit my mind next year. There are people that are going to join my team that I didn't ever expect to join my team. Yeah. Right? There are things that are going to change in my business that I've never expected. There are things that are going to happen in the world that I can't expect. Coronavirus being an example of this. Or even Apple has changed privacy settings um, across its entire uh, the industry of the free internet. It's going to change the way people do marketing. Um, so I was watching, you know, information about that from Facebook, um, where it's like, if you do Facebook advertising, you should look at the new Apple policy because it affects your ability to target and retarget customers to your ads. Yeah, and so I'm like, that's going to change. Mm -hmm. Like, so what's going to happen? Am I going to go to YouTube? Am I, am I going to go to LinkedIn? Is something going to change? So there's so many things I don't know that I'm so excited to see what will come up. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to set a deeper day for focusing on, I know what the goal is. What's the primary goal? Like the definite major purpose, the major goal I would call or the the chief aim the major thing and the little things under it is all the goals I want to achieve along the way and then I'm going to create a plan and so I'm going to make some decisions some commitments and I'm going to commit to them I'm going to say here's what I'm going to do um and so just getting clear man clarity is the most expensive thing you could not have and the most richest thing you can have I actually didn't realize yeah we're on a clear talk show so I mean I'm just saying that because it makes sense and I'm like yeah that's why we're on clear talk <laughs> lack of clarity is the most expensive thing you could have in your life Lack of clarity. The cost of not knowing. The cost of not being clear is so expensive. It is completely misunderstood um, and not valued. Like, it is so costly and expensive for you not to know, not to be clear about something. And then clarity is the most richest, valuable asset you get around. Mm -hmm. 
When you are clear, you take massive action. You know what to do. You know how to fix things. You move forward. You progress. You achieve. When you don't know what to do, you go into indecisive state. You start to become procrastinating. Mm -hmm. You start to push things off. You get depressed. Yeah. You get demotivated. You start doing things and mistakes, more mistakes. You create um, uh, longer ways of learning things. It's just terrible. So I'm going to set up deeper gigs to just get clear on what I want my next year to look like, how I'm going to make it look like that, uh, my goals, what I want for myself, for my company, for my team. So that would be the most important thing to do over the next couple of weeks is, first of all, look at your entire year and find all the things you could be grateful for for this year. Like, man, all this stuff happened. That's so awesome. Absolutely. I do this thing. I was teaching my team. I do this thing, this thing every year where I say it's called Armin's year. So you could do like Jeanette's years. And I actually put the year, I put my age of that year, and then I put in the title, the top, top most, like, biggest things that have happened. So I know the overall perspective of that year. Yeah. So for this year, it was Think Bigger. We launched a, a youth movement. Oh, um, it was um, speaking to clients, launching online, our, our online coaching program. Um, it was our first $100,000 a month in sales online, specifically through a presentation. Um, it was me getting into the best shape of my life ever. If I've ever had in my life, I've been in the best fitness shape. And, uh, where, and put, uh, where can I get tickets to what? Oh, the gun show. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that, but my tiny ass. I guns. have to say you up. My I tiny have to say you up. <laughs> <laughs> and there's just other things, personal achievements, stuff like that. So, um, that's the first thing you want to do. Gratitude. Like, wow, yeah. this happened. Then you go next year. This is the most happen. important part. This is the, what, what I do now. Now I future pace my gratitude. Very simple. I don't try to set goals on what I want to achieve. I go, what do I want to look at the end of next year back and say, I'm so happy I did this. Yeah. So I'll make a list of all the things as if they already happened. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, did this, did this, had this, went here. Yeah. And I, that's how I list my next year's goals. I say, did it. Mm -hmm. And then I go, I just got to do it. Yeah. It's just a matter of doing it. It's already done. It's just a matter of time. So, so yeah, that's what I would do. I would goal set. You know, and if you don't know how to goal set, like get a coach that does this stuff, go buy a program or a course to learn how. I've been doing years of thinking grow rich, so I follow Napoleon's philosophy. Um, you can also buy thinking grow rich and do that. So yeah, just that's the most important thing. Make sure you're clear with what you want to do next year. But here's the next thing. I'll, I'll finish with this. It's also very important to understand it's it nothing's different. So if you're already doing this, that's a problem. Like you guys are waiting around like as if like New Year's Day is a magical day. It's not a magical day, it's just another day. It's Thursday. That's it. New Year's Day is what? Friday. That's it. Yeah, next Friday. It's just Friday. Yeah. It's no different. Some people think like a day, like superstitiously. Sometimes you'll think like, oh, we have to do it. Yeah. New Year's resolution. Your New Year's resolution should have been set years ago. Yeah. For all the time. You know, um, I was with my trainer this morning. He was like, you excited about New Year's? I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'm as excited as I am every day. He goes, <laughs> What do you mean? I go, well, it's just another day. I mean, what's special about the day other than on a man-made calendar, it says it's number one of a new year. Yeah. What is anything different about that day? Nothing. So if you're generally a lazy person, that's going to be another lazy day. Mm -hmm. If you're generally a sad person or just party person, you're just going to party that day. The same way you do every Friday. Like, it, there's no difference. So yeah. um, I don't believe in, like, attaching myself to, like like mainstream or, uh, you know, mainstream, like, occasions. Sure. I don't. Like, if you can love your family and give gifts throughout the year, what is what makes Christmas different? Yeah. Get what I'm saying? Like, if you don't do nice things for people and become thankful, mm -hmm. why is Thanksgiving the excuse? Mm -hmm. It's like, you should do that all the time. So it's like, if you can't set goals and always want to achieve new things throughout the year, New Year's won't be any different. It's true. It's not a new year. In fact, for most people in the world, it's just going to be another year just like this year. <laughs> you know, Jim Rohn always says, you know, if you do nothing, if you do nothing, the next five years is going to look, he's like, can anyone tell the future? And everyone goes, no. He goes, sure you can. Because the next five years is going to look just like the last five years if you do nothing. Different. Yeah. I'm like, that's so true. Absolutely. Some people are saying, you know, like, new years. No, it's not a new year unless you make it a new year. That deep? It was. It was deep like the ocean. <laughs> Get what I'm saying? Yeah, for real. Um, it's just a year. It's another year. So your choice over the next two weeks by sitting down and focusing on your goal setting, focusing on making decisions, breaking ties, cutting ties, and starting new paths, yeah. that is the act of you making sure it will be a 
new year. If you do none of that, you can't, you're not allowed to say New Year's. Yeah. Because you've got to say old another year. year. <laughs> another year? Yeah, another year. The old year. Same say, year. New Year, same crap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. get your head out of, like, you know, if you're already doing this good, but if you're not, like, just please hear what I'm saying. It's not going to be a new year if you do the same thing. Yeah. It's only a new year if you do new, new things. things. Yeah, absolutely. So hopefully that, you know, sheds some clarity. To me, I'm like, it's just another day. You know what I did last year's New Year? I was in my office. Oh, yes. Working yeah, on my that. webinar slides. Yeah. I was making presentation slides for my launch, like, uh, two days after New Year's. And I just, on a second screen, opened up the New York ball thing. And 12 o'clock hit, it dropped the ball. Everyone started celebrating. And I could, like, see everyone gathered that night. Everybody in the world gathered to see this ball drop so they can see that clock hit 12. And a suit, it's like all this hype, man. I'm just working on my slides and all this hype. I'm like alone in my office. Some of you are like, that's sad. I'm like, I was pretty, I was celebrating inside my heart. Aww. I'm working on my dreams. I was like, it was a party for, for hundreds of my souls. You know, like I didn't need people around me to feel a company. I felt very, uh, very much not alone. Like I felt very yeah. um, good. I was, I was having a party in my house because I was working on my dreams, my, my purpose, and uh, my purpose. So my, <laughs> I'm seeing this screen. <laughs> And this ball drops, okay? And everyone's like, Woo! And I'm like, for like half a second, I'm like, and I'm just watching and I stop. Like, I stop writing slides and I look at them and I'm just staring. And like, literally, 10 seconds passes by that that timer. Yeah. Everyone went back to normal. Yeah. 10 seconds passed by, everyone started leaving. Like, they started leaving the street. Mm -hmm. the, the news report had nothing new to say anymore. And it's like, yeah, guys, so uh, it's a new year. And, like, everyone just went back to life. Yeah. And I'm like, do you know what the difference is between 10 seconds before 12 o'clock and 10 seconds after? The, the difference is the, the year? The anticipation? No, nothing. <laughs> nothing is different. <laughs> Legit, it's all a facade. Ah, uh, yeah, it's true. A minute prior, 11.59 and 12.01... On one year and another year. It's a whole other year, right? The only difference is nothing. Legitimately nothing. That person who's still having family problems, standing in the street waiting for the ball to drop at 11.59, when it hit 12.01, guess what happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. They went home back to the same family. That's true. That person who's struggling to pay bills, standing on the street with their friends, waiting for the ball to drop, hoping that this ball dropping and the, the timer hitting 12... Is going to renew their soul. It's going to renew their... It's a clean slate for them. Whole different year. New opportunities. All the shit that they do wrong is going to go out of the window. Guess what changed for them? The moment the clock hit 12. Nothing! <laughs> Nothing! We need to get our heads out of the clouds, man. Bring your ass down to earth. And realize that unless you work and get to doing things differently... New year will just be another year, not new year. Right, Plenty? Right. <sighs> Guys, <laughs> got to wake up, okay? It's cool to celebrate things. Absolutely. But if that's, if New Year's, Christmas, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Easter, what else is there? Victoria Day, American Day, July 4th, what is that? Yeah, whatever. You get it? Valentine. Valentine, your birthday, the biggest one. Yeah. Everyone gets controversial with me about it. It's just another day, guys. Who cares? If these days out of your year is more exciting to you than your average day, something's wrong with your life. You might not like what I'm saying. I'm more interested in saying the truth more so than saying what you want to hear. If an occasion, like your birthday, like a holiday is more exciting to you. Like you wake up happier that day. There's fundamentally something wrong with your life. Your every day should be like that. To the point where it drowns out. It's just another day. Now look, it's a far stretch what I'm saying. Most people don't know how to think this way or feel this way. I get it. Because you're so used to it being opposite. Because mainstream, we grew up in a culture where everyone is excited for things coming up. Well, why don't you switch that around this year? Why don't you say, you know what? Armin's kind of right what he's saying. I'm going to make every day the most exciting day of my life. Yeah. Every day I wake up, I say I'm going to make it the best day of my life. What does that mean? That means Christmas doesn't change anything for me. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving doesn't change anything for me. 
New Year's doesn't change anything for me. I've set the standard and it's going to be a great day every day anyways. Yeah. Thus, there is no excitement for some random occasion day that everyone else says I should be happy for. Happiness should be the standard of your life. Mm -hmm. Not the occasion makes you happier. Yeah. You go, but Armin, that's a little extreme. You should be happy. No, I get it. I'm not saying don't be happy. I'm not saying to not like Christmas. I'm saying love it. But make sure every other day of your life is just as fun. And if you don't know, if you can't say that, there's something wrong. Isn't there? It's the same people that live for the weekend. Yeah. Same people that live for the holidays. Same people. Yeah. There is something somewhere else that is not already inside of you. I'm sorry. I'm going to go a little mystic guru on you, but like, it's the truth. True happiness and wealth and, and success in life comes with internally, everything is great. New Year's won't change that for you. Nothing changed from 1159 to 1201. I saw a meme once. The guy was on the toilet at 11.59. And then the second picture was 12.01. And then literally the caption said, same shit, different day. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. It was so funny, but so true. It is true, yeah. It's same shit, different day. <laughs> you can have the same shit, different year if you don't change them. Okay, I didn't mean to turn into a motivational talk, but... Necessary message. Absolutely. Came through me, man. I didn't... I, didn't, I, was, I hope that answers the question. Definitely. Um, wow, great. So we've got a question on Facebook from yep. Isaiah. How long do you put aside for your deep work day? The whole day. The whole day. The whole point is that it's the whole day. From morning to night. You don't let anything bother you. Nothing. You don't let anything take your attention. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Question number three. I have a large skill set and could coach on a few different categories. I'm stuck between business and personal mindset coaching. What would you suggest I do first? That question is from Jacqueline Manson. Yeah, Jacqueline, if you have both skill sets, teach the same, teach both in one program. That's it. What do you think I do? Do you tell Armin? Yeah, what do you think I do? I sell a business program. Yeah. Do you think I'd not teach mindset and time? And the real question is, do you think one is more important than the other? No. Business is what people want, usually, because um, they think it'll make them money. No one values mindset the way they should, you know, like strangers. Um, and the stranger, uh, and sorry, and mindset is what they need. Yeah. Sell both in one program. Don't do two programs. One program. That's it. Sell the result, the strategy, while giving the philosophy, the, the mindset. Do the same. Put it all, the key is this. Take all your skills and put it in one program. And then make sure the program's outcome, the program's marketing and brand is based on what the audience wants, not based on what you want. To say what they want. So if the market's saying they only want mindset, sell a mindset and give business inside. If they all say they want business, sell business and give mindset inside. Give both them say. So that's it. You don't have to choose. Awesome. Next question. Some of the results I create for my clients seem intangible because I do energy work. Is there any way I could get more people open to what I do without revealing my full method? That question is from ABX. Everything is tangible. It's perspective. If you think um, spiritual, there's yeah. no tangibility to it. You don't think you don't think there's a quantifiable end result to spiritual coaching. I get this so much in my program. People are like I'm a life coach. I'm a purpose coach. I'm a health coach. I'm a well, not health coach, but like I'm a well-being coach or something. Something mm -hmm. like where you help people better their life. There's no tangible. I don't teach people to make money. Yeah. I don't teach people how to get something. I'm like you don't. Let me ask you a question. Spiritual coach, arguably one of the most important coaching in the world. Yeah. If you truly spiritual coaching, mean you're connected to infinite intelligence in some sense. You help a person understand how to connect themselves and appropriate themselves with universal energy. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you align a client with their spiritual self, a lot of things can happen in their life, right? Family gets better. Yeah. Business grows. Health improves. Money increases. Mm -hmm. If you're really doing a good job. Yeah. All of these are quantifiable end results. All of these are good end results, specific end results. Those are your tangible results. Mm -hmm. You use that and you market it. You don't tell people what your method is. You don't need to. You only market the results you get from the method. Wow, so please say that again. You don't market your method. You don't need to. You don't have to tell people what your method is. You got to market the results from the method. And so when you try to focus on trying to, in your marketing, to tell people what you, what you do, all the method stuff, it bores people to death because they don't care yet. They haven't been told why they should listen. Mm -hmm. 
when you put out marketing efforts showing people's results from what you teach, but not telling what you teach, then people are interested so they know why they want to listen. So if I was a spiritual coach, in a sense I am, um, I just don't label myself that. When I help people align with themselves to believe in themselves, right? Spiritual coaching or meditation, whatever it is that you do, their life improves. You'll get text messages from them saying like, Armin, you know, ever since you told me, uh, you taught me how to go within and like connect with my self-awareness or something, I or my intuition, I have been attracting all the opportunities I've ever wanted in my life. I got the job I wanted, my business grew. These are all results. Now the question begs to differ is, are those happening to your clients? Yeah. Because if they're not, what are you really doing with them? Right? That's the integrity part. If your clients' lives aren't improving, aside from like just them saying that, can they prove it? Then you're not getting results. The problem isn't that you don't have tangible results, that, that, that spiritual coaching is tangible. It's that you're not producing actual tangible results. So the focus is wrong. You shouldn't be focused on um, what you believe that people should think. You should be focused on what it gets them. Marketing is the effort of publicizing the end results of what you are offering. Whereas coaching and the deliverable of that product is the effort of actually helping them get those results. Think of it like fishing. Honestly, marketing is like the best understood with fishing. What do you do with fishing? Do you just go and put your hand in the water and try to catch the fish? Do you go and yell at the water like, hey guys, I need you. Can you come to me? You don't do that, right? What is the mechanics of fishing? You get a hook, you put bait on the hook, you throw it in the water waiting for them to bite, right? The hook is no different than marketing copy. When you hook someone in with a nice headline, when you hook someone in with a nice email, when you hook someone in with a, you know, with a Facebook Live, marketing, when you hook them in with a nice image that captures their attention, pattern interrupts them. It's how you hook them. The bait is telling the stories and showing the end results. It's the bait. It's what attracts them. You put up a client testimonial who changed their life, lost the weight, made the money, fixed the relationship, felt more confident, right? Yeah. Their life transformed. You throw that, it's a bait. The hook is the, the copy. The bait is now other people who want that mm -hmm. come to you. Mm -hmm. Okay? We call it result marketing. Testimonial marketing is selling results, not tactics. So there's a whole free training on this in my, uh, my YouTube, channel. YouTube channel. On yeah. YouTube channel or in my Facebook group in High Ticket Coaching. Definitely. Um, if, you go into, if you guys are in High Ticket Coaching right now, the community, yeah. you guys should go into the videos of the group and you'll find there's a training that says how to sell without being salesy, testimonial. Uh, it's about selling with the results. How to sell with the results. There's a full one-hour training on it. Um, so the bait becomes what they want that attracts them. The hook is what grabs them, right? And then reeling them in is called sales. Isn't that the whole process? Yeah. Once they're in, you know, unlike the fish, you eat them. Once they're in, yeah. you help them. So in, instead in of so instead of eating them, you're gonna get them a nice aquarium. Yeah. You're gonna put some rocks at the bottom. Or a better home, better home. Maybe some, maybe a little bit of plants, and you're yeah. gonna put them there, and you're gonna feed them and nurture them day to day. Until you get them a result. That's it. So so you're like, I don't have tangible results. No, you do. But you're just thinking about it wrong. Like, number one, you do. Ask your clients what things have changed in their life practically from what you've done with them. Then there's our results. Capture those. Screenshot the testimonials. Yeah. Get videos from them. Use that as bait. You throw it out there. I'm looking for people who want this. Yeah. The bait's going to bring them in. Either results bring them in, right? Or stories. Your story, their story. Both of those are good bait. You gotta understand also what your market wants is bait. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying is, for example, the previous person's like, do I do business or mindset? Yeah. Uh, see what your market, Jacqueline, right? Jacqueline. See Jacqueline. what your market's bait is. Is the people you're trying to help more interested in business or mindset? Mm -hmm. Are they? What are they expressing? And then put bait on the end of that hook and throw it into the field, into the water. Mm -hmm. That's how you look at it. Yeah. So. I hope that answers the question. Um, you know, repeat it one more time. I want to make sure I answered it directly. So some of the results I create for my clients seem intangible because I do energy work. Is there any way I could get more people open to what I do without revealing my full method? Right, yeah. Um, yeah, but first of all, yeah, so one side, hopefully that answered it. Yeah. Some of them are not intangible. All of them are tangible. Even the person changing how they feel, that has to do something in their life. Mm -hmm. Or else what good is it that you're doing it? You know what I'm saying? Like, let's say you do energy work on them. They get up, they're like, I feel... Clear now. Okay, well, what does that mean? Yeah. 
then you're wasting your time if they just go home feeling clear and they come back they're unclear again. Yeah. What if they go home and they treat their kids better because they're clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, now your energy work does have results. Yeah. So think of it that way. Second half, I don't want to reveal my full method. Here's the truth. Most people are scared to reveal the full method or the method in, in general because they've been marketed to by people who sell products thinking that selling coaching is the same way. Because people who sell products, they sell it as if it's like there's a secret mm -hmm. or something. I got Maybe. something you need. You don't know. It's behind the TV. And that's a type of marketing that works. Yeah. But in an industry where people are more fast hooky with like getting downloadable things, you can't apply those methods in, in, in uh, coaching. Not directly, at least. There's a way to do it. And so this whole fear of like revealing things is that it's attached with the idea that they will learn it and not need you, right? Mm -hmm. Well, okay. That doesn't... In information selling, I get that. Because yeah. the only thing you really have to sell them is information. So the moment they know the information, what do they need you for? Nothing. In products, I get that. Yeah. Because if they know what the product is, they can just go buy the product somewhere else. Yeah. But in coaching, it doesn't apply. The very thing they're paying you for is what? Yeah. Your you. coaching. Yeah, you. It's you. They can't go somewhere else. Yeah. I actually had a sales call. Um, I listened to one of my reps were doing them. And the guy got on the call, he's like, I booked a call because I've never booked a call with anyone. I booked a call with you guys because Armin puts out so much value, it makes everyone look like, like they do nothing. He literally is like, this guy gives more value than I've ever, I built my, I, he's like, I started my whole business just from watching these YouTube videos. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm like, wow, good for him. Oh. And then he goes. That's great. But then it begs the question comes to mind, like, if he's giving all of this for free, what is he possibly charging for? Yeah. And I'm like, what a, what a belief set he has. Yeah. He actually thinks what I'm giving away for free is going to help him grow a business. It's going to help him start. It's going to help him start, but you, you really think? Tell me one person became a millionaire without actual coaching or mentorship. Tell me one. I have yet to hear one webinar story about how the guy watched a couple of videos and figured it out. No. Does not happen. So he actually doesn't have a belief in his own thing that he's trying to sell, which is book coaching. Yeah. Because he thinks information is enough. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> you think information is enough? If information was the only thing you need to succeed in your business, everyone would be rich. Yeah. Because let me ask you this. How many people know what to do? Everyone. Everybody. I can Google right now what to do. Do they do it is the question. Do they do it if they do right is the question. Do they do it and do it right and still know how to handle the problems they didn't expect to show up while they're doing it right is the question. That's where coaching inserts. I'm not afraid about giving free value away or revealing my methods. It's very simple. I show you how to grow an audience organically, create a, a, a beta version of a presentation, sell to that audience that presents to a presentation to get book calls and close them on the phone for a beta program. Then we take that, refine that process, and we put it into a coaching automated program, or you can sell it and create a funnel with that presentation as you run ads to it and get people booking calls with you. That is my whole method right there. Go do it now. Yeah, I'll see you in a couple months on the call. Because... Results don't come from knowing what to do. Results come from doing it well. And doing it well has a training process. Yeah. And no human being on this planet has done anything very well that stands out, is outstanding, without help. That, I understand and have belief in my product, which is coaching. It's not my information. I could release my Speaking Clients course right now to everybody for free. I have a very low success rate. Not because the information doesn't work because they don't know how to do it well and go through the whole process without messing up and quitting. So coaching is what you're paying for, right, my friend? Because you're selling energy healing. There is nowhere else you can go to buy that. Yeah. So even if, you, even if you taught your whole process from start to finish, that'll be enough for them to get hooked to you because they go, wow, this person gave me everything. Now they'll pay you to help them do it. Yeah. There's three steps in the ladder for coaching. See, in Russell Brunson and Internet Marketing, the value ladder is give away something for free, sell something for a small amount, then a little bit, and a little bit, and then sell them the really big thing. Yeah. That's a value ladder for product and information products. Information products and physical products. Not for coaching services. It's a service. It's different. By nature, it's different. You can't hack it from somewhere. Yeah. You can't get my coaching indirectly somewhere else. So it doesn't matter how much you know. In the value ladder of coaching, it's first you teach what to do for publicly. Then you can show them how it's done. Right? And then you sell helping them to do it. That's how coaching is sold. I can show you what to do in a webinar, in a Facebook Live, on a show like this. I'll tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. Do this. 
I can even talk about how it's done, the method. But at the end of the day, the moment you get your mind to come to do it, you're like, man, I wish I had accountability, strategic advice, someone to talk to, problem so solution oriented coaching. Because I don't know how to deal with my process of this how. Absolutely. So the thousands of dollars you invest into coaching is for the person's coaching. Yeah. Not for the information. Yeah. You shouldn't be afraid about revealing your full method. You should give it freely, knowing you'll get people interested in you because now they go, wow, this is good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then hooking them in to be like, do you want me to help you through it? Yeah. Here's the thing. There's two types of people now that come to you. They're the ones who get all your free content and go and try to stumble their own way through it. They'll take two to three times longer than any other person because their ego or their lack of money is in the way of them actually paying for the help. That's fine. They're still your customers one day because yeah. they're going to appreciate You know how long I watched Russell Brunson stuff before I bought his book? Years. Years. You know how long I've been watching Sam Oven stuff and now I'm like, right, you know, I might buy his stuff. Years. I've been following people for a long time. And then eventually I buy some. One guy specifically, Alex Becker, crazy with YouTube ads. He's a, he's a ninja online. I watched his YouTube videos for months for free. He gave so much value in them. I'm like, man, this is great stuff. And guess what? I bought his coaching program, yeah. five, his uh, four-figure coaching program. I just booked a call one day from one of the YouTube videos. I'm like, hey, I want to buy this. And I bought it. I knew how he teaches what he teaches, though. But I'm like, man, I want his specific instructions and his specific coaching on calls. Mm -hmm. That's what I paid for. So you got to get your head out of the course, info, knowledge, and expert business. It's not what we do in coaching. In coaching, it's about what we do for them ourselves. Yeah. My clients are paying thousands of dollars to be in, speaking to clients for the weekly calls and for the personal coaching. We call them one-on-one -on -one and we help them throughout the process. We give support, accountability, coaching, strategic advice. We help them build the business. Yeah. But knowing how and knowing what is a small part. I hope that really clears up things because coaches confuse their business model with the info products model, which is like, if I give it a wall away, now it's like, what will they buy from me? Yep. What are you talking about? Yep. I can right now break down exactly the bird's eye view of every single thing you need to do from scratch, scratch to building a six-figure to seven-figure business. You think it starts, ends there? <laughs> Imagine I showed you the whole journey. You're like, holy crap, there's a lot of stuff I got to do. But like, yeah, and this is free. Go do it. Might be like, but for this much money, I will work with you throughout the whole process. Because I've done it multiple times, so I know how to do it, so I don't know how to make sure you don't do the right way. Maybe you learn this and you perceive it wrong. Yeah. You think when I said this, you go, oh, it's this, and you go do that wrong, cost you three months of time trying to figure that out. Yeah. You're like, but he said to do this. No, you didn't think, you didn't understand that properly. You misunderstood the content. Yeah. Wouldn't that be worth money to you? And if it's not, there's a fundamental problem with your thinking then. Because you actually don't value what coaching really is, which is the process of helping through the process. Absolutely. It's the process of helping them through it, not what and how. That's consulting. Consulting is telling you what to do. We do that. We do that. Pretend like this as a coach. Pretend you are first a teacher for free. Yeah. Like, this is actually a great way to look at it. In your marketing for free, be a teacher of what you do in coaching. Teach it. Teach everything. Teach what to do. Teach how it's done. Like, help them understand what not to do and what to do, okay? In the process of marketing now in the warm network, this is how to get people interested in you. Teach them what to do. Bring them into your world now. They're following you. They're watching your stuff. They're getting your emails. They're getting your ads, right? Now, be a consultant. Mm -hmm. So, you was a teacher to attract them. Now, you're a consultant, and you're really giving strategic hows and what's in the world of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Strategically consult them. In for free, again, YouTube videos. What do you think I'm doing my YouTube videos? I'm consulting you guys. I'm telling you, here's how it's done. I'm giving you strategy, I'm giving you strategy and I'm giving you systems, right? I'm giving you philosophy and strategies, okay? But when I offer you to pay to get my help, I'm not paying, you're not paying me anymore for teaching you it and you're not paying me for consulting you on it. You are doing that a bit. But what you're really help paying me for is to do it with you. That's called coaching. I Arm walk you through the process. Yeah. Last week on one of our coaching cars, calls, sorry, Armin said something that, you know, it was, per, it was like directly in correlation to our students, but it's talking about coaching in general. And he said, as one of our students was explaining their, their, their issue and Armin was coaching them through it, he's like, listen, why you, don't worry about it. That's what I'm here for, to help you solve the problems and to be, be here when you run into problems so I can also help you solve those at those points in time. 
And I was like, wow, that's pretty much just coaching in general, yeah. right? It's not about it's not about the the skills, the methods, etc. It's not about the teaching. It's simply about helping them go through their problems at, as they face it. That's it. When it's happening. And it's funny because like you can't learn in advance. Yeah. And you, no matter how much you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, because once that first adversity comes in, is when it's you like are fighting. tested. It's like fighting. It's, yeah, yeah. When you're early in the fighting and you're learning a martial art, you intellectually know what to do. Yeah. But the moment you get punched in the face, you forget. <laughs> right? Yeah. You're like, I know, I have to block, counter punch. Okay. Yeah. Get hit in the face. Now you're like, what the hell am I doing? What the hell? Yeah. Am I? Okay. It's in those moments that having your trainer there, your coach on the side, yelling at you, knowing what to do, do this, remember that. That's yeah. when you see the value of coaching. Absolutely. It doesn't matter if you intellectually know what to do or how to do it. Yeah. Because when you get the lights knocked out of you, can you get back up? Do you think Rocky would be Rocky without his coach? Do you think Creed would be Creed without his coach? How many times did Creed quit in the movie? So many times he was like, adversity of his, he's like, screw this. Yeah. And then, and then people would help him out to coach him through it. Do you think Creed would become Creed without Rocky's help? Do you think Rocky would become Rocky without... You get what I'm saying? Like, it is no, it is complete, like, I don't know where people have got this idea, this notion from, I could do this on my own. I was like, what's why? What kind of egotistical perspective of life is that? Okay, try to walk on your own. I'll see you in five years, like, when you were born. No, you want to walk. Yeah, if it's so easy, why don't you learn English on your own? The problem is, you're out of learning phase now, because we went to school, yeah. and you think because you left school, you're done learning. No. In fact, you never learned anything. <laughs> When you leave you school is when you start these. learning. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like when you leave school is when you start learning. Yeah. You guys think because you're out of school, you're done learning. So you go, I don't need learning anymore. Yeah. I don't need coaching. I don't need expertise. I don't need teaching. I don't need courses. I don't need co No, you, it starts there. That was just the foundation for understanding communication between humans. Yeah. English, math, sm simple stuff. The, the journey begins when you want something that you've never had. I just had a thought, and it's like with that school, like school teaches you how to memorize things. And when you leave school, it's technically when the learning actually starts. Because that's when you're thrown into the real world to attempt to utilize yeah. the things that you not learned but memorized. Yeah. I think the problem with people when they do leave school is that they t attempt to start living before they've done any learning. Yeah. Or experiencing. Or experiencing. And I, and I also tell my students, I'm like, guys, you're not paying me to make your problems disappear. Absolutely. You're paying me to, to help you solve them when they show up. Yeah. That's what coaching is. Yeah. You think I can make anything disappear? No, I can minimize the amount of problems you have because I'm showing you a proven path for building your business. Mm -hmm. But it's nonsense to think that just because Armin's here now, I won't have problems. You know what? That sets an unrealistic expect expectation. Now you're like, a few weeks in, something happens. And you're like... <gasps> Oh my God. Oh, well, just your reaction to that problem and how you're not able to handle it is why I'm here. Yes. Because you don't know how to handle it. And when I show you how to handle it and I coach you through it, you're going to learn how to handle it. And then Absolutely. you're going to be able to handle problems like that. And then guess what? A bigger problem shows up. You don't know how to handle that. And then I show you again. And eventually I teach you how to think so that you can become your own coach and coach others. So it's a pay it forward kind of thing. People don't pay for my information, nor do I pay for information. At some level, that is valuable. Like, I'll, I'll pay to be a part of masterminds to learn things I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know. I'll pay for knowledge. So one idea could change everything. But that's at a level where I have built the muscles, the consistency, the systems, and the habits to become successful first. Now I can value one idea in a mastermind that's 100 grand or 50 grand or 30 grand. I can value that one idea because I know everything else is set. I've already learned how to do everything else. I built the muscle. And one idea could change the strategy. It changes everything for me. Yeah. But when you're starting out, ideas mean nothing. You need to build habits. Habits are only built through consistency, dedication, and persistence. That can only be done with accountability most of the time. Accountability comes from what? Coaching. So, look, my favorite line is this. I could say, I just said a whole 15-minute rant about <laughs> coaching, right? It's important. Yeah. I could just sum up all that 15 minutes into one thing. If you are a coach, you're selling coaching, but you don't have a coach, you're a hypocrite. That's it. That, in one sentence, encompasses everything I just talked about. The 15 minutes is why you're a hypocrite. But I could just say, if you're a coach selling coaching, and you don't have a coach or pay one, you are incongruent with yourself. You don't understand the value of, your own, of what you do, of what you sell. So that alone, just remember that, and make sure you got help, right? Or make sure you know the value of what you do as a coach, and your coach is yourself. 
That's it. So give away your full method. Absolutely. Give away everything. Give away everything because you're, one, forced to create better things now on mm -hmm. the inside. Mm -hmm. It just makes you better. Second, it will show people why you're good instead of hiding it from them as if giving your worst stuff or your medium stuff is going to make people want to work with you. That mm -hmm. makes no sense. Yeah. Giving your best stuff is going to make people want to work with you. And understand that's not what you're selling anyways. Your job is to make sure they understand getting your help to do it is more important, especially with energy healing. I'm, I'm pretty sure you do that to them, right? Like, yeah, this shouldn't be a problem for you. Yeah. So what's the next question? So we've got some questions from Facebook. Uh, one is from Oscar. Hey, Oscar. What's up, Oscar? Do you have a morning routine to support achieving your goals? And if so, can you share it? Yep. And another question, what book do you recommend to achieve uh, our goals? Well, the book is obvious. Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. Hill. So Listen, only <laughs> don't, read, don't read Thinking Grow Rich. Study it. Don't. If you read it, you didn't read it yet. Yeah. You don't understand. Gotta keep reading it. Yeah. You need to keep reading it. Over and over and over and over and over again. Make sure it's over years of your life. Yeah. That's the only way you actually understand the book. It's the only way. No point in reading another book until then. No point. No point. You're distracting your mind. You have not mastered the philosophy before you move on from it. That makes no sense to me. Second, I do have morning routine. I'll give you a uh, quick review of it. Uh, I wake up early, um, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., something like that. It fluctuates if it's on a weekend. If I sleep late, because unexpectedly I work hard like late. Um, but generally, I'm waking up at 5 a.m. Um, and then as soon as I wake up, I read my goal aloud. I don't read, like I memorize my goal. So I just say it out loud, and I emotionalize with it. That's my first thing I do. I smile, read my goal aloud. I stand up, I hit my chest, like, I'm like literally 5 a.m. By December 31st, 20, you know. Um, and then when I go, I just go to the washroom quick, you know, hygiene, whatever. Come out. Uh, I sit down for 30 minutes, put on meditative music, and I, uh, I meditate. I meditate on my goal. So I visualize my future. I visualize what I want to become. I create a picture of myself and what I want to become, what I want to achieve, what I want to have, and, uh, and then I create a very vivid picture. I also simultaneously think about what I'm going to do today, think about what I'm going to do this week, this year. Um, I allow my thoughts to kind of flow through my mind. I watch them. There's things that are like on my mind that I'm thinking about generally, and I let those come through. And then I refocus my mind on visualizing what I want to become. I do have 30 minutes. I put a timer on. Once the timer's done, I do this repetitively every day. It's so vivid. <laughs> I grab my gratitude journal. I have a journal. I've been doing this for three, four years now, so I have journals filled. I'm almost done my third one. I'm going to start a fourth journal for the fifth year in a row where I write down one to five. Like, I don't have a minimum. I just write whatever I feel like. I'd rather write one thing I'm grateful for or I could write ten because I just feel like it. So I open the book and I write. I write I write the date and I write, I'm so grateful for, boom. And then I just write, like, what are I really grateful for? And I think about it. I'm like, what just happened? And I use that as a way to document my life. So something happened last night. I'm like, I'm so grateful for last time for this happened because of this. Mm -hmm. It's so great, right? Or I'm so grateful that today, but like is this. I'm so grateful that we did this this month, you know. And I and I kind of document my life, but I also I document it through gratitude. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. So it's like journaling and gratitude at the same time. It's pretty cool. Once I do that, I read the self confidence formula out loud to myself from Thinking Grow Rich. There's five parts to it, you know. Um, first, I know that I have the ability to achieve the object of my definite purpose in life. Therefore, I I'm not going to say the whole thing. It's really long. Um, I have it all memorized as well. I have it on paper, but I memorized it, so I just say it. I say that to myself. Once I do that, then I grab a book, and whatever book I'm reading at that time, I read. And I read for 30 minutes. And so um, sometimes I go over. Sometimes I go over the meditation. I go more than 30. Sometimes I read more. Right now, uh, I'm reading a marketing book. Um, and I'll be honest, I was reading personal development books in the morning, and I've compared the two. So um, I've compared what is, what is it like when I read marketing or business or like tactical books in my morning reading session versus self-improvement books. I'll be honest, guys, biasly, I'm just telling you from my experience, personal development makes way more sense to read in the morning. I, I can't, I'm finding less value from reading tactical things I know I could do in my business, but it's like, that doesn't improve me as a person. Yeah. And I realize, I'm like, Jim Rohn, that's why he says, you know, work on yourself harder than you work on your business. Because when I was reading Think and Grow Rich, I was reading different books. Like I was reading um, from Think and Grow Rich. I was reading How to Own Your Own Mind from Napoleon Hill, I would read The Devil, Grow Up Rich, Repeat His Mind, Think and Grow Rich, Law of Success. Now I'm going to start reading Law of Success again. I was growing myself. So that morning, I would take one to five different major like breakthroughs. Yeah. And it, it would improve me as a leader, as a person. So in that day, in my business, I would carry those lessons with me. Mm -hmm. So it made me better in my performance. It made me more money. 
because I was more focused. I, I was growing me. And when you're growing you, it's like you're endless. But I stopped reading a personal improvement book. I'm like, let me just read a marketing book. I'm reading this book. It's the only time I read in the morning, right? Unless I schedule it, I just read in the morning. But now I'm reading it and I realize I've been reading it for weeks and I'm almost done the book. It's a good book. It's really good. I'm like taking notes and everything. But I'm finding something different. Throughout my day, I don't have any breakthroughs about myself. Interesting. Yeah, so I feel like empty a little bit. I'm like, uh, yeah. like I don't feel like I grew today. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I feel I like do I'm doing the same yeah. thing every day. I do, yeah. So because I'm not putting any conscious effort into growing me as a person, but I'm doing it for my business, mm-hmm. I realize my business is growing a little bit slower. I'm also feeling more stagnant throughout the day because it's still information. For the last few weeks, I haven't learned anything new concepts of myself in life. Yes. And because of that, my mind's kind of stiller. That makes sense. So I actually feel like I'm not moving as fast as in my business as I was when I was reading Personal Improvement. It's kind of weird. Yeah. But I'm realizing that like work on yourself and that'll make you more money than if you worked on your business. Holy crap. What a crazy breakthrough. And I wouldn't know that unless I did that over months and I practiced and I experimented with a book. So actually my, my suggestion strongly is when I'm done this marketing book, I'm only going to go back to reading self-improvement in the morning because I'm like, I got to work on myself. Yeah. That's what's growing my business. Mm-hmm. Listen, if I give you the right formula that is proven or works, but you have the wrong mind, you're always going to mess it up. But if I, if I teach you how to think the right way and I give you the wrong formulas for doing things, you'll figure it out. Therefore, you should only be improving yourself every day. The business will grow itself because you're growing. The business is a reflection of you. So as I'm not growing myself, my business is not grow slower. I make more money when I'm growing myself. When we did our five-figure days and six-figure months, recently, I was reading... Personal development. Yeah. Now we're not making as we didn't make as much sales this month so far from last month. It's because I'm reading a marketing book. It's so weird, isn't it? So odd, ironic. So we're not letting him. Yeah, we're, we're making sales, but like nowhere close <laughs> to what I was. Like, well, it's close, but but my point is less money. Yeah, it's less. So some people are like, well, I got to learn how to sell. I got to learn how to business. I, uh, that's how I make money. No, you make money if you work on yourself. It's insane. So that's my thing. So I read for 30 minutes. After I'm done that, then I get up and I either go to the gym, like I work out with my trainer, or I go to the shower and I have a whole affirmation series I do over the shower. I can't be too long to, uh, like, if you're in my program, I would, I'm, I'm creating a PDF for the mindset module. Oh, okay. I'm creating like a whole training on what I do in the mornings. Nice. On how to prime your mind for we're success. Bringing, we're bringing works. MVP back. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. But <laughs> my students are going to get this in the program where I'm going to show you my entire like disciplined schedule on how I condition my mind for success. And like if you don't do that, you're screwed. It doesn't matter who you hired or what you know about business. If your mind is not conditioned for success, you are like a repelling magnetic force where you're pushing away all the things you need to succeed. So you're just working five times harder for nothing. Yeah. When you prime your mind and charge your mind to magnetize it towards things you want, like it's like a magnet, you rub it and it gets like charge it starts attracting without your control like things yes, that you need yes. so you grow 100 times faster than the person working harder and you're working less because your mind is charged it's bringing you out all the things yeah. this is going into the spiritual stuff of business but business is spiritual if you don't know that you don't know business yet which is true so um so yeah that's my morning essentially uh, generally my morning yes um and also i've done a new thing where my phone is off until 10 p.m 10 a.m so i can't check messages no one can contact me i can't do anything i used to pick up my phone and look, look at my emails Super I can't do it. My phone has a lock thing. It's called downtime on Apple. It has this option. It's called downtime where it pretty much makes every app inaccessible. Um, and for the time period I set, so it's like, it's actually really hard to get into them. Yeah. So I have it from 10 PM to 10 AM. So at 10 PM, I stop no matter what I'm doing. I got, I got to go home because my phone's not working. And then at 10 AM is when I can actually check my stuff. So, and I also don't have social media on my phone. Like I don't have Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. I don't have anything. So I, to check it, I have to go to my laptop at work. So I just my mind is very protected from distractions. That's what I'm trying to say. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, hopefully. Uh, Oscar followed up by saying, "What version of Thinking Grow Rich? The original?" Um, um, original. by the 1937 edition, it's like orange and yellow. It's that one's the best version in my. Do we opinion. have one in here? No, we don't have one in here. Oh, okay. No, I, I mine. I took the cover off, so you can't even see uh, what it looks like. It's just red. Oh, mm-hmm. I know you're the one you're talking about. 1937 edition it has like stripes and it says yeah. think and grow rich that's the best version yeah. that I've read I've read a lot of versions but that one's the best maybe version. when when Isaiah uh, when Isaiah yeah, ends this hill on, on, on YouTube you know what I'm talking about right the, the original thumb, edition put the thumbnail on yeah, okay like um, and then Oscar also said TGR teaches you how to meditate or or meditate our goals no no it doesn't 
it just tells you that like personal power comes from connecting with yourself and that it comes through meditation. Yeah. And then Isaiah asked technically two questions. Yeah, two questions. Okay, great. How do you teach people how to think instead of me trying to solve their problems and giving them your giving your opinions to them? I want to lead someone to a decision. I don't want to make the decision for yeah, them. That's a whole process. Go into our uh, course, into SGC, go to module five. Open up the lesson called how, how to Deliver a Great Coaching Program. And then skip to the part that says five steps to creating breakthroughs for your clients. I show up an entire step-by-step process. I was telling him about this because he was like, I want to learn how to coach better when we're working with SGC students. I'm like, watch this. I give an entire step-by-step psychological process on how you get a person who's closed-minded and has a problem to break through and understanding and planting a new seed of suggestion in the mind. Yeah, without... Yeah, without... No, you don't even it's tell... Just, it's sales. Well, like, there's a process. Yeah, that's actually good for selling as well. And even um, talking to, like, your sisters, you want to... Make, yeah, yeah. Make, go, handicap. go through the five steps. Okay, thank you. And then, and then you should also watch Inception. No, that's, that's about it. <laughs> that was a joke. The manipulator way of... <laughs> <laughs> doesn't, teach, doesn't teach you anything other than the fact that whatever seed is sub, the message of that movie though is deep whatever idea you set deep into the subconscious mind will in, totally embody and take over the host Absolutely. that is true yeah. so the five steps in that lesson video I'm telling you to watch in SGC module 5 shows you how to do that that's what I'm trying to say okay. I'm gonna check it out. Thank you. what was the next question uh, well we're actually at 102 do you want to take another Yeah, I, I've been holding a bathroom one for like 20 minutes now so but is there another question on the why no okay no. we've answered yeah, them all there was one that said why do you document your life oh Isaiah why do you document your life yeah he did say that why do I document I heard from a great wise person once that if your life is worth living it should be worth documenting <laughs> I wish you guys could see Isaiah's like, face <laughs> if it's worth living you would document it so it just impresses your own subconscious mind to go I'm worth living Absolutely. That my life is going to be important. So what? how do you teach your mind that it's going to be important? By documenting, because you're implying that it's going to be worth reading about one day. Yeah. In addition to that, and that's a great point. That's a great point. But in addition to that, I would argue that, you know, your, your life will happen so fast that you will miss the things that, that happen to you on a daily basis that are big deals if you don't document. If you really, like, for example, a lot of people are saying this year was a waste of time. But if they genuinely took a look at their year and what happened day to day, month to month, they would realize that amazing shifts happened for them. Yeah. Individually, in ways that they, they, they are not ready to perceive or, you know, be conscious of. Yeah. But if you would have documented, you would have journaled, you would have just wrote, written down something good, something you were grateful for, something yeah. that you didn't expect, you would look back on this year and be like, wow, look at all of this. And this was such a phenomenal year, right? It'll help you. It'll genuinely just help you in the good times um, to, rem- to remember again, like, wow, how grateful you should be for how great things are going. In the, in the not-so-good times, you can take a look again and be like, wow, look at all the things that were yeah, accomplished, I've done that. I've not read my, accomplished. I've read my gratitudes like six months ago when I was in low states. Yeah. Wow. It's very important. Wow. It's not just for the good. Yeah, Patrick talks about that. It's not just about the good. It's about, it's about the bad. Everything. It's about also, everything. Also remember this. You can only grow what you measure. So if you want to grow yourself in life, you Great. have to measure it. Yeah, I don't do that. That's interesting. So you're not growing. Yeah. How do you know you're growing if you're not comparing it metrically? How do I know I've grown since last year if I don't see the documented version of what happened? So true. How do I know? Feeling? Your feelings are fluctuating. You're feeling timeless. I can feel like crap today. I feel like cr- feel great tomorrow. It tells me nothing about what I've done, though. Absolutely. My feelings are not how I measure my growth. Mm-hmm. Feeling is a choice. All right? It's not an accumulated feeling. Mm-hmm. So you eliminate feeling, you look at it just mathematically. You have measured yourself. I have an entire series of 140 videos of daily vlog videos I recorded myself when I was broke as shit seven years ago. Broke. Like $2 available credit living at home my mom. Yeah. And from day one of getting an opportunity to go be a sales rep somewhere in Vancouver, I vlogged every day of my life for four and a half months. And I got to see myself go from the stupid young kid I was with no money, no nothing, no skills. From day one to 145 days in. How I've made money, paid off my debt, took a trip, took my parents to a trip to Bahamas, started my own company. All of it vlogged. It's all unlisted. No one could ever see it. I might leak it one day. <laughs> I might leak it. One. <laughs> You're going to see some it's the most uh, great characters. craziest. Like, I look at it, I'm like, who was this kid? Like, what, who the hell is this? Yeah. And it's crazy to see the growth, man. 
my thought process, I would vlog every day what I was thinking about, what I would learn. Oh my God. The day I hit 10 sales online on phones, I'm like, <gasps> I was the top salesperson today. I'm like showing up. I'm so excited in the video and I'd watch. I'm like, man, I was such a child. It's crazy. Or like when I have like drama at work, I'm like, I would talk about it. I'm like, here's what I think about this. And I would, I listen to myself, man, I was deep. I would, I watched one video. I, I watch my vlog sometimes because I'm like, I want to see my growth. I watched one vlog one time where I'm sitting down and I'm ex trying to explain how like, awakened I feel and I did such a good job I'm like I was like sitting there I was like talking about I'm like it's like when I close my eyes and I visualize what I want it's like it's happening right now my body my cells transform into that person and I can actually feel like I'm doing it as if there is no time as if that the thing I want and the thing that I am is in one place at the same time and that's if there is nothing there's no process I'm like this I'm starting to understand what it feels like to be awakened and I'm like explaining this in my vlog and I'm sitting there I'm like watching myself I'm like whoa <laughs> like even at that time and I was working so hard on myself on my mind on my spiritualism and it was insane man like I watch these videos that's one form of documentation another form is like I told you guys I write down all the major things that happen throughout my year on a notes tab another version of my gratitude journal every day There's I so can many see ways. the process so many ways. you know and then uh, the, the best version and I have this as well I have this mini book from like eight years I've had it now. And every now and then when I feel like I have this urge, I'll open it up and I'll date it and I'll read what I wrote last time. And it could be like seven months ago. At one point it was like yeah. a year and a half ago. Yeah. And I read it, I'm like, and I read everything that I said was happening at that time and I'm like updating myself from the last time I journaled entry. And now I'm like, yo, it's been two years. So now I'll write again, I'm like, hey, Armin. Been a long time, eh? Been a while. I like, do that too. <laughs> every, every time I do it as well, I'm like, yo, I do that been a while, all the man. time. Hey, sweetie. We haven't talked in a long time. Let's update. Man, and then I go for like my hand cramps. I'm going seven pages in trying to document everything that's happening. Yeah. And I read it. I'm like, all this stuff happened. Oh, yeah. And this guy was an asshole. So <laughs> that was funny because in my last right entry, <laughs> at the last entry, I'm like, this guy's my, this guy's the guy who's going to help me out. And I'm like talking about it. And I read it. I'm like, oh, yeah, by the way, he, he ended up being an asshole. <laughs> so it's healthy for you. So healthy, man. The relate. Uh, let's take this. Like if I'm in a relationship with a girl, right? If I don't give her ever attention. Ever want to talk to her? Ever let her know what happened in my day? Ever do you give her any like care? Or do you think she'll stay with me? No. It's like, why do people expect that with themselves? That's me. Deep, yeah. If you don't spend time with yourself, give yourself attention, write to yourself, hear yourself out. Why would you ever stay in a relationship with yourself? Thus, people do not have relationships with themselves. They're broken up. They're unconsciously living. Yeah. You want to be conscious? You got to face yourself. You got to be with yourself. You got to have a relationship with yourself. The way you do that is through communication, self communication. Meditation, speaking out loud to yourself, writing, reading, uh, videotaping yourself. You know how many videos I got? I got two specific videos. I'm probably due for a new one. Where um, I'm, I have a video before I was broke, before I went on that journey, I vlogged everything. I made one video where I talked to myself in the camera. Yeah. Wow. I'm like, hey, Armin, today is this date, this time. This is how old you are. This is how much money you got in your bank. Um, and I'm making this video because I know where you're going to go. And I want to thank you in advance for everything you're going to do and all the work you're going to put in. I was like talking to myself. And I have the, like, the snapback backwards on. I'm wearing a t-shirt. I'm like a kid in my mom's basement. And I'm like, I know over the next four months, man, you're going to turn into the craziest version of yourself. So I'm going to thank you in advance. And I, I'm like, if you're watching this at that moment, you're looking at me now, I know you're going to remember where you were. I know you're going to remember how low you were and how much you've changed. I, don't, I can't imagine where you are right now. You're probably in your dream car, in your dream condo, in your dream business. Yeah, I built yeah man, I built so much faith in myself. And then what happens is four months later, I watched that. And I remember the exact day I watched it because I had paid off everything. I made money. I was like so, my life transformed, 180, right? Just from taking control. I was in the best shape again. I was working out. And I remember I was outside in the cold. I was door knocking at the time. It was a sales job. And I was cold. I sat at like Timmy's because it was like my, my manager was coming to pick me up. And I opened my phone and I watched that video. It was exactly like three and a half months after I filmed it. And I watched it. I just started crying. That moment, I built... I built unshakable belief in myself. Exactly. You do what you like you, I sealed it. Exactly. And a person goes, how do you build confidence and belief in yourself? By doing things like this. By investing in yourself, right? Yeah. Talking to yourself. Believing in yourself. Betting money on you. Some people betting bet money on, on things. Betting on you. Some bet people on bet you. on things. They bet on the sports game. Bet on the lottery ticket. Bet on yourself. Or they put money down on some other thing. Yeah. But they won't even put five minutes of a video down into themselves. They won't bet on them. They don't believe in them. The way you make yourself believe in yourself is by doing things that you would do and things you believe in. Absolutely. If I believe in someone, I'm going to invest time into them, right? Yeah. So if you believe in yourself, invest time into yourself. Go and record yourself. Write for yourself. This is time you spend for yourself. So you're trying to build, like, I'm trying to build communication with people, like with you. Yeah. I want to have great communication, but I have great How do you win the trust of someone else? 
You invest time into them. Become dependable. Listen to what they say. Yeah. How do Make you sure build you compliment them, elevate them. Yeah. You don't do that to yourself? How, how are you supposed to believe in yourself then? Right? It's like treat yourself the way you would treat someone you love. Wow. They both believe. I have a second video a year later where I watch that video. I'm filming myself watching the video. And then a video stops. I looked in the video and I'm like, hey, man, it's exactly a year from now since you watched that video. Now here's what's happened. You have a company, you have an office. I, I remember at the time we were gloating. My gloating was like, we have a $5,000 monthly expense office. That was my glow. We had a great office, though. It was a great office. And but I'm like, we great. got to a point where I was broke <laughs> to, I have a $5,000 monthly office space. Yeah. With like extraordinary individuals. I'm like, look how much I've grown. It was so dumb. Like, I'm like, I look at it, I'm like, my expense for my office is lower than that now, and I'm more proud. <laughs> but back then, I'm like, if the more money I could spend, but the more was, rich I am. Exactly. Terrible belief. The more money I could spend, the more rich I am. But it expanded your consciousness yes. to know that it was possible. Because I never had money to spend. On an office floor. You being able to spend, I was like... Was a, was a oh. symbol of richness to me. Because yeah. you know where we used to That's a poor be way of the thinking, office? Though. Poor way of thinking. Starbucks. Poor people, poor <laughs> thinking people, when they don't have money, they think, oh, if I just had the money, I would spend it on this. Yeah. So when they get it, what do they do? They spend it on that. They spend it on this. And then they spend it and they realize they have no money again yeah, and they go, yeah. something's wrong here. Yeah. I need more money to spend. Yeah. And they always stay poor. <laughs> it is only the moment when they got to break their pattern and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. The more money I spend is not... Determine how rich I am. More money I have is how determines how rich I am. The more assets I have that make me money is how rich I am. Okay, now you don't want to spend it anymore. You want to invest it. See what I'm saying? It's a change of thought. My point is, I have these videos, man. Like I have this tr for years at this point of all this different documentation. And even one thing we did was very powerful. Uh, we did this in a in a little group we were in developing ourselves. We wrote a letter to ourselves. It was called Letter to Armin, Future Armin. And it's actually a letter, and I so vividly described where I was at. I was like, I'm sitting on your mom's laptop. Your phone is next to you. Your water's here. You're playing this song. I'm like, are you there now? And I said, and then I'm like, you know where I am? Okay. <laughs> you're legit. Now that you're this here. This is not a joke. <laughs> let me, thank, so let me take a moment to thank you. It's yeah. so damn spiritual, bro. Wow. Yeah. Like, let me moment, take a moment to thank you. I know right now you're probably looking out the window of your office over a beautiful view. You're probably driving the dream car you want. You're probably with the dream relationship you want to have. I'm like, I just want to thank you, man, because I know over the last couple of years, you really put the work in. And I'm like, no one else will know what you went through. Only I do. Only I know how much work you, only I know how many times you slept at your office. Only I know how many uh, days you didn't sleep at all. I know, only I know how many hours you put in per day, every single day. Only I know how many times you sacrificed going out with friends, going out with family, doing things that you know you shouldn't have, that you wanted to do, but business was more important. I'm like, only I know how many risks you took, how many failures you did, how many times you cried when no one was watching. Only I know. And I will know how much time you put into growing yourself, being honest with yourself, doing the right thing, fixing your wrongs. Only I would know how many times you asked questions and took a leap of faith on yourself, learned more things, spent hours learning things. But only I will know all the wrongs you did that you fixed, all the good that you did that you noticed. Only I will know. No one else will know because I was there every single moment with you. And for that, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for putting all the work because I know now that the life you built is the life I've always dreamed of. And me sitting here as Armin now, knows I would love to have that life, but I also know you earned it. So I want to thank you for allowing me to live with you in that moment. It's so, man, it's so deep. I'm saying, you know, like, I get chills as I'm reading it. And every now and then I find the letter again, somewhere in my office or at my home at this point, and I just read it, and I'm like, whoa. I'm like, how much of this did come true? That's great. How much of this did come true? A lot of it. And so that's how you do it. The very act of faith is believing in something that's not real yet, right? Or at least that you cannot see yet, right? Yes. Not that's not real. That you, can't that you can't see. see. So what do you do? You do actions that convince yourself that you believe it's going to be real. Wow, so when you're, when you did that to yourself. First of all, the, the aftermath of the show is way deeper yeah, than the actual like, show. <laughs> like when you did that this to is, yourself. This is clear talk after. Yeah, after yeah. After if you hours. set up to sense. make a million, you have so much belief because you've been doing yeah. this habit that I said I was here. I bet on myself. I poor, yeah. Exactly. I was poor and now I'm rich. I did it. Yeah. I was rich and I wanted to go out. my dream car and I got it. Yeah. And I'm recording myself, so I truly believe that whatever I put my mind to, I get it. So yeah. if I say I want to make a million, it's like you build that habit and belief in yourself where, yeah, I'm going to get a million. So Here's a deep spiritual way of so understanding deep. everything I just said in one sentence. Wow. Very, this is what personal development is good at. Taking deep, wise concepts and making a bite size so you can always remember them like quotes. I love quotes. Here's a good way to believe it. To understand everything I just said in one statement. You want it so that when you hit that big goal of yours, you are not surprised. Everyone says that, and I never understood it. Like, that logic, everyone. Yeah, you want it so that 
Let's say your goal is to become a millionaire. I'm just saying. Or to hit $100,000. Or to grow a business. Or to get your love life. Or to feel, you know, have abs. I don't know. Whatever. Let's say that is your dream's life right now. Your, your life's purpose right now. Right now. Because that's all you think about. you got to condition your mind so to get so familiar with having it. That by the time you have it, it doesn't feel new anymore. I used to teach speakers like this. I would say t- with the speakers, I'd be like, here's how you eliminate fear before you speak. You practice and you visualize yourself doing it so many times until when you get on stage, it felt like it's your millionth time doing it. Yep. And you won't have any fear. Because it's ingrained in you. So it's like, if someone ever asked me, no one's ever asked me this. If someone's ever asked me, how do you feel about what you built? I'd be like, man, I've been feeling this since I started. This team, this company, the money, the growth, myself, the, the opportunities, the abundance, the, the confidence I have in myself and others, the clients, the, the, op- the, the people I've met, the, the lucky breaks I've had, the knowledge, the expertise, the closeness with God. I've been feeling this since day one. I didn't have to wait to see it before I believed it. Yeah, that's the worst thing. Because when you said I'm like, is that possible for you to feel exactly just that? You well, let me flip it for you. If you don't know what it feels like before you have it, you'll never have it. You'll never have it. Until you know what it feels like to make $100,000, you won't ever make $100,000. Until you know what it feels like to make a million, you won't make it. How do you know how it feels like to never have that? You'll know. You'll know how to make yourself feel like it. That's just a matter of time spent with yourself. There's only two sides to it, right? There's what you think it's going to be like and what it's actually like. Yeah. So you got to spend the time inside yourself to reminisce and engulf yourself in the ideas that you think it's going to be like and then start surrounding yourself and your mind with people and things that make you show what it's actually like. Yeah. Wow. So you can take their experiences and embody it in yourself. And that's why you buy programs like your programs. That's why you buy programs. That's why I pay. Programs in general. That's why I pay tens of thousands of dollars to be in masterminds because all I got to know is there's someone next to me in the in the chair that's making more money than me and asking them how it is and what they're like and so this is what you're doing you're in the mass market you're seeing people making a million two hundred thousand yeah. dollars that was normal you're like oh, i'm making it normal to so me it's normal i'm making it normal to me see bro when people are trying to break out of poverty break it out of their limiting beliefs break out of their fears break out of like not being enough to pay bills like this is where we all start in a sense if you grow up in a dysfunctional family like this is the majority of people live this way yeah. they grow up this way yeah the first level for them is they won't understand the value of proximity they don't understand the value of having high-level people around you. They don't because they, it's not where they're at yet. You know what, who values knowing paying 50 grand to be in a mastermind with other people that pay 50 grand? You know who values that and doesn't need to be sold and just buys? It's a person who's reached a level where they understand that the only thing now that matters is the impressions I make on my mind. Not the person who still needs development training. Not the person who still needs confidence training. Not the person that still doesn't believe they could do it. It's the person that believes all that and goes, what's next? Well, I need to surround myself with people that are doing better than me. Yeah. That person doesn't need to be sold to mastermind. They'll pay to be there just because they want to be around them. Because they know the value. They don't need to be sold. They get it because they're there. So when someone doesn't know what, they can't justify paying 50 grand or 100 grand to be a part of a group, it's because they're not there yet to understand. Right? So... Those people will more so find, justify paying five grand um, to learn information about how to get what they want as they would to pay 50 grand to be in a, in a room of people who have done what they want. But ultimately, you make more money back on the 50 than the five. You save more money. But you can only know that when you get there and you understand the value of proximity. Who is around me? Who am I talking to? Is so deep. You're like, if I'm paying five to learn information, I'm just going to do it. Instead, if I pay 50 grand to be in a room full of people that have done it, I've saved more money than... You make more money. And it's, it's a better investment. Small, I think you'd be like, what the hell are you talking or about? Or if you're just starting out, because people starting out won't see the value of surrounding themselves with impressions on their mind. Absolutely. Some people ask me, in Napoleon Hill, there's a story about Andrew, uh, Andrew Carnegie's right hand, or Charles Schwab. Napoleon goes up to me and goes, you have a suit for every single day of the month. He has 31 suits. For every single day of the month, he changes a suit. And they're all expensive suits. And back then... Like a suit was like two hundred dollars. That was like two thousand mm-hmm. in those times. It was like two to four four thousand dollars. They asked, "He's like, why do you do this?" He goes, "It's not for the impression I make on others. It's for the impression I make on myself." Because I came from a place where I was in rags. I had nothing, so I wear a different suit every single day for the impression it makes on my subconscious mind of affluence I have. Yeah. 
this is how people really, the deepest, highest performers in the world, bro, they understand that. What I do impresses on my mind. And the bad also counts. The good is like I put 50 grand and be in a mastermind. I'm around other people to pay 50 grand. To the majority of the degree, most of those people are going to be some form of successful people so that we can learn from each other. What am I teaching myself? I am amongst this category of entrepreneurs. Yes. But if I'm not there, I will never believe I will be. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, the opposite is also very, very true. Let's say I do wrong to someone. I don't do anything to them. I'm doing it to me. Let's say I look at someone and I treat them bad. Or I'm a shitty customer to somebody. Or I'm shitty to a customer that didn't like me. Example, the way I treat them is the impression I make on my mind of what kind of person I am. And if people understood that, they wouldn't treat other people badly. Love because it. they know they actually hurt themselves, not the person. But no one gets that. They don't know that to be jealous or to be hateful or to be angry or to be cynical towards someone else or to be a shitty person. You know those people that comment on your ads and people are like, oh, F you, man, you're a loser. Like if they, they, they only do that because they don't understand their mind. Because if, if, if they understood, they'd realize that what they're doing at that moment yeah. is not hurting the person. It's hurting themselves. It's completely poisoning their own mind. Yeah. And it's making them recondition their mind that I'm this kind of person. So that's why gossiping is the most, uh, it's like the devil's way of capturing you, man. Because you sit down and start talking about others negatively, what are you teaching yourself? You're a negative person. That's what you are. And that's all you get now in life. What a negative person would get. And there's so many ways that the enemy inside comes to, you know, grab you and throw you off your, off your game. Educating yourself on your own mind and learning how to control it is the only real key to peace of mind and wealth in life. It's not business strategy. It's not, man. It's not like consuming sales. No. It's, it's mastering not yourself something. and your mind. It's self-mastery. That is why it's the highest form of education. Self-education. Understanding the oneself. It's the most extravagant, most brilliant, most incredible machine you have. It's called your mind and your soul and your spirit. And is the mo most un underutilized, un misunderstood, and, and, and un undivided, like, it un like not, not, no attention is given to it in the world. You know? yeah. We try to go land on Mars to understand what's there. We don't even know what's inside our own head yet. So, you know. Yeah, Anyways, Oscar, does that answer your question? <laughs> I hope so. What my morning routine is? I <laughs> hope so. so. We got to wrap up. Yeah, yeah, I am dude. legitimately about to burst. Like, it's, My laptop's going to die. we got to end the show off. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Clear Talk. This is the number one show for coaches who need clarity, getting clear on the talk so that you guys can grow your business, make a big difference in the world. I'm your host, Armin Shafi. It's your co-host. Janetta Duro. And if you guys love this content, hit that subscribe button on YouTube and hit that little notification bell to get notified every time we release new content every week. If you're on Facebook right now, share this. Get some people in the group so they get this kind of information. It could change your life. Hit that like button. Let us know in the comments down below what you love the most about the show. And look, if you want your questions live answered on the show, go to askarmin.com, which is right here somewhere on the screen, and uh, send me your questions so we can talk to you soon. I love you guys so much. Make the rest of your week, and Merry Christmas, make the rest of your week the best of your week.